In the mid 2010s, a man by the name of Mbuvi Gideon Kyoko, better known as Sonko, emerged as a powerful figure in Nairobi's Matatu Empire. Matatu crews became fashion icons, known for their stylish attire and extravagant lifestyle. Sonko owned a fleet of luxurious Matatus, featuring big screen TVs and unique names. It was an impressive turnaround for Sonko, who had once been in prison, but little did they know, his journey had only begun. Sonko, originally from the coastal town of Mombasa, had a troubled past, entangled in legal troubles and even escaping from prison. However, alongside his wife, Primrose, he managed to establish various businesses, gradually venturing into the Matata industry. Sonko's rise to fame was fueled by his ownership of luxurious Nganyans, the elaborately customized minibuses that became symbols of Nairobi's rebellious culture. Adorned with neon lights, booming music, and vibrant artwork, these Nganyas were a testament to Sonko's wealth and power. Nairobi's political scene was shaken when Sonko, an audaciously dressed man, emerged on billboards. He soon became known as a boss, or a Sonko, which is Nairobi slang for a rich person. His flamboyance and opulence brought him fame and fortune, but also attracted allegations of corruption and involvement in drug trafficking. To secure political protection, Sonko aligned himself with the president of that time, Uhuru Kenyatta. He even went as far to protest for his innocence during his controversial ICC trial. This alliance propelled Sonko to become Nairobi's senator, and he wasted no time showcasing his generosity and influence. Sonko's ambitions didn't stop at the senatorial role. He established the Sonko rescue team, providing emergency services, and even using his famous ganyas as free hearses. Critics questioned the affordability of his ventures, but Sonko, confident in his abilities, dismissed their concerns. As Sonko solidified his influence, he became the chairperson of Eastland Matatus. Defending the interests against government attempts to relocate pick-up and drop-off points, it seemed like nothing could stop Sonko. A group of senior civil servants grew concerned about Sonko's potential as Nairobi's governor, so they devised a plan to stop him from reaching the governor's seat. Their first objective was to prevent Sonko from obtaining a certificate of good conduct, highlighting his criminal record. However, Sonko appealed to President Kenyatta, who surprisingly issued the certificate, seemingly showing his support. Adjusting their approach, the senior civil servants stipulated that Sonko must have a running mate of their choice, aiming to control his actions and secure specific commercial interests. Polycarp Gathe, a lawyer protege, was selected for this role. Their unconventional strategy succeeded, with Sonko securing a record-breaking number of votes and Igathe assuming control of City Hall. However, Sonko maintained his grip on power, surrounding himself with loyal individuals and exhibiting an unpredictable nature. The atmosphere of Nairobi became one of paranoia and chaos. Igathe attempted to address the administrative challenges, but resigned six months later, unable to fully control Sonko's actions. Undeterred, Sonko continued his Machiavellian tactics, leaking conversations and screenshots to discredit his opponents. His governance style involved constant reshuffling of the cabinet, ensuring fear and confusion reign at City Hall. As the power struggle continued, a new adversary emerged in the form of Peter Kariuki, a lawyer and a former civil society operator. Kariuki aimed to curtail Sonko's power and bring stability to Nairobi. However, Sonko was not one to back down easily. While Sonko seemed unstoppable, his adversaries were relentless. Exploiting his paranoia, they sponsored negative headlines and flagged suspicious transactions in his bank accounts. Sonko's grip on power began to slip. Sonko's alliance with then the deputy president William Ruto, who had a fallen out with President Kenyatta, escalated tensions. Kenyatta summoned Sonko and instructed him to surrender Nairobi county functions to the national government. Reluctantly, Sonko agreed, but it was clear he had been put in his place. Within a month, the Nairobi Metropolitan Services was established, effectively taking over the city's governance. Sonko's impeachment followed as he refused to sign funds to the new entity. Disgraced and bitter, he lashed out, leaking incriminating records and publicly accusing the president's family. In response, President Kenyatta admitted to orchestrating Sonko's removal and had him arrested on terrorism charges, claiming he ran a private militia. Sonko's downfall was swift and dramatic, 
The once untouchable Matata King had now fallen, leaving behind a legacy of controversy and power struggles.